Hello there, Evie here, and welcome to my review of the Cryo Rig M9. So let's crack open the box and see what we have in store. Now I'm going to be expecting a pretty similar turnout to the C7, which is a very low profile cooler from Cryorig. Uh, they seem to have a very similar packaging style. Uh, yes, they have the same thermal paste and there is a large tube you get, but you only get like, I don't know, 5-10% of the tube. So you've got maybe three applications there maximum. But then again, how many applications are you really going to need? They could have done with a smaller tube. Last comment I had in the uh, in the video for the C7 is that they're putting out all this plastic for just like nothing. It's literally like the, the width of your finger. Uh, I could peel it off. I'll actually show you some footage from uh, the last video, but it's extremely light, not really much in there. A uh, nice manual. Um, it's in, again, a throwaway bag. That's, you know, fair enough. It would have been nice to be a resealable bag. Uh, you know, think of the environment, that sort of thing. Uh, as to the cooler itself, tower cooler. Uh, it's a larger cooler than the C7, so we should be expecting better thermals, and we can compare those uh, in the thermal testing graphs later on. Uh, as for the mounting mechanism, these are different to the C7, so it'll be interesting to see how those uh, fare. Those might be something to do with an AM4 bracket, uh, but then again, not entirely sure, or the AM3 bracket. Again, not entirely sure, but the mounting plate for the rear is actually uh, completely the same as the C7. So I'm going to assume that these, regardless for AM4 or for the uh, LJ sockets, or the AM sockets and LJ sockets, is going to be a very similar mounting mechanism. So it's going to be that go on the back, uh, this gets mounted somehow to the front, and then we have, you know, these plates that clamp on top into that mounting bracket. So. Eh, nothing too special, but we'll see how it all goes together. It looks like it might be quite fiddly, but we will see. I mean, there are far worse ones than we can see here. As for jumping straight into the package itself, uh, trying to break this open will be something, but should be too tricky. Oh. You just push it out. Okay, fair enough. So yeah, not very tricky at all. Uh, I like that the fan is actually pre-attached. That's a really nice feature. Uh, trying to pre-attach fans themselves is uh, actually relatively annoying. Uh, there is no thermal paste that comes with it attached or applied, pre-applied to get the tube. Um, it's actually a weighty piece. It really does have a bit of heft to it. Um, but yeah, I quite one thing I actually quite like, just notice there. Uh, you can see the colors uh, around the cooler. Uh, you'll get a better shot of this now. Uh, those colors actually match the colors that go into the cable, which is sleeved, but you can actually see the cable through there and the colors match. That's that's quite inventive, I quite like that. But, uh, but anyway, as for the cooler itself in terms of its looks, it is nice, it's a really nice looking cooler. It's got a good weight to it, uh, whether that's half the fan and half the cooler, I can imagine, you know, I don't know, good 80% is a cooler, but the fan itself seems pretty cool, seems pretty nice. Let's see if we can get some specs on that fan in terms of whether it's a sleeve bearing or if it's a ball bearing fan. Nothing on the uh, packaging itself, but I'll see if I can find something on that. It'd be nice if it's a ball bearing fan. Uh, sleeve bearings generally a little louder, won't last quite as long, but you know, they do the trick. But yeah, let's crack this onto the, onto the test bench and see how it performs. Looks pretty good so far. Just before we head into the mounting and testing, this wouldn't be an AV Techie video if we didn't take a more in-depth look at the cooler. So let's take a look at some more of the features of the M9. At the top of the M9 is this angular cover panel, which is purely for looks, and covers up the ends of the heat pipes, which on a closer inspection look pretty presentable to me. Included is an extra set of rubber vibration dampening strips, as well as a second set of hooks for a second fan. But Cryorig doesn't create other 92mm fans that you can buy individually to match the included fan. So if you want two fans on this cooler to create a balanced look, then you'll have to buy two additional fans. The base of the cooler is made of copper, which depending on how well the three heat pipes are clamped into it, should provide a strong transfer of heat from the CPU to the heat pipes. And from the look of the bolts either side of the mounting plate, this could be a simple mounting procedure. Speaking of which, let's move on to that. After removing the C7 from the test bench, I started mounting the M9 without reading the instructions. Starting off with the back plate, the first logical step was to insert the long bolts 
through the holes that line up with the holes around the socket on the motherboard. They seem to clip into place and you won't need to hold them when tightening the nuts from the other side, an excellent start. So, after placing the bolts through the motherboard, I went on to what I thought was the next logical step, which was to fix the brackets onto the bolts. At least to me, the logical way to mount these brackets would be with the crosses facing up and the curved pressed edge on show. Either way, the thumb screws go on without a hitch and we have a somewhat solid platform on which to mount a cooler. Now generally it's a good idea to lay the case down flat to mount the CPU cooler. A couple of reasons for this is that thermal paste is a little easier to apply to a horizontal surface and the cooler doesn't need to be constantly supported when applying the screws. As for the cooler itself, the base plate protective sticker needs removing and if there's any sticky residue left over like I found on this one, that needs to be cleaned off. Any electronics cleaner will do, or isopropyl alcohol, and with a bit of elbow grease, you'll end up with a perfectly clean and shiny surface. Now I mentioned earlier that having a pre-attached fan is nice, and it is, don't get me wrong, but it's not so nice when it has to be removed to be able to install the cooler. I like the efficiency of the wire hooks, but they're not that easy to remove if you have short nails, and they take a fair amount of force to get off, so I think these could be very slightly redesigned to make the removal and installation just a little easier. As for the fan, we've got a 2200rpm 92mm fan, but again, you can't get these individually which is disappointing since it's not a bad fan. By that I mean it's a 4-pin fan, so PWM compliant, it's fairly fast, and it's not too loud. For our thermal paste, we're using Arctic MX2, which means we can compare the results of this cooler to all the other ones tested so far. I know this sort of thing rubs people the wrong way, but I wouldn't want to see a difference in thermal paste throwing off results when comparing different coolers. We're also using more thermal paste than usual, since it's hard to tell how each mounting mechanism is going to close the gap between the CPU and the cooler. And using too much is just as good as using the optimal amount, and is far better for cooling than using too little. On to mounting this thing. This is where things go a little downhill in the not reading the instructions department. The screws in the base of the cooler don't meet up quite with the bracket below, so clearly something is amiss. I initially thought this was the way that the brackets were supposed to be mounted since the rounded edge of the brackets are on show, and that just seems to be the logical way to go. Have the best side on show, right? Well, I was still adamant that this was the way to go, so I decided to attach the brackets to the cooler first, and then mount the cooler with the brackets to the posts through the motherboard. I would have shown the footage of that, but I mixed up the stop-start recording pattern, so the footage was never recorded. Luckily, I got my act together in time to show the mounting attempt this way. Emphasis on attempt. And of course, that didn't work out well, so clearly I was doing something wrong. If all my hints haven't been obvious enough up to this point, the breaking out of the instruction manual shows that the brackets have to be flipped over, which just doesn't look right to me. We'll get a better shot of the finalised setup shortly, however Cryrig claim that you can install this cooler in under 4 minutes. I could instantly improve on that by moving the threaded bolt over to the other face of the brackets, which means you don't have to spend 2 minutes opening the instruction manual to realise the brackets should have been installed in a counterintuitive fashion. So adding that on top of the one failed attempt means that you'd have roughly a 10 minute installation time, taking into account some time for figuring out what's wrong. But these are all sort of minor complaints, and of course you should read the manual before using any new component. But in reality, not many people do, and I feel the design should be all the instruction manual that I need to install this cooler. Anyway, with the cooler mounted, let's get the fan back in place, and then we can test this cooler to see what it's really worth.
So by using the M9 to cool the i7-6700K in a Prime95 small FFTS test for 5 minutes, 5 minutes is all you generally need to get to the top end of an air cooler, we find out that the M9 is able to manage the i7-6700K with no thermal throttling in sight. Now I will be doing different testing methodology, I've got GTA 5 ready to do that sort of stuff, Dirt 3, some other games and stuff like that in the future, but for now I need to revamp all of that so we're just sticking with Prime95 for this test. So it's all well and good knowing that this CPU cooler isn't going to thermal throttle your CPU if you're sitting it on an open air test bench, but let's compare it to say some competitor products. For example, two from the left on this graph, the Be Quiet Pure Rock Slim, which is also a 125mm tall cooler. Well, you'll be looking at an average of say 2 or 3 degrees hotter temperatures with the M9. However, the comparisons between those two coolers don't stop there. The Pure Rock Slim is £5 more expensive, which is around £25 or your regional equivalent, and the Cryorig M9i is £5 cheaper than that, so about £20 or your regional equivalent. So, 3 degrees for £5, how does that sound? Well, in terms of sound, I actually believe the Pure Rock Slim is a quieter cooler. It actually doesn't have a fan that spins as fast as the M9i, so it's naturally of quiet to cooler. Uh, also, although it does have a more, uh, for want of a better word, janky mounting mechanism, it has push pins, whereas the M9i has a far better, far superior mounting mechanism that is a lot more secure, in my opinion at least. And I can probably think quite a lot of people will agree that a push pin is not a superior mounting mechanism to a proper clamping plate with bolts and things. So the final question is, is it worth your £20? Well, I only really feel you can answer that sort of question by having some sort of context, a yardstick, if you will. So let's compare it to the value of the Pure Rock Slim. So the M9 versus the Pure Rock Slim. Let's do that. Um, I would go personally with the M9. Now, there's a couple of reasons why. Well, first, it's, in my opinion, a slightly better looking cooler, and that really doesn't matter to everyone, but to myself, uh, it's, it's a somewhat, it's a so-so um, of sort of speculative opinion, but I think it does look a little nicer. Uh, I am a little disappointed that the top cap doesn't really have anything other go anything else going for it other than the fact that it is just a top cap. It doesn't seem to be ended or it doesn't finish quite as nicely as I'd like it to. And there aren't options to get that second fan. If there were, this could be quite a chunky little, little beast on this on this motherboard. It could look quite dominating uh, in a very small form factor build. It could look really cool, but unfortunately that's not the case. But anyway, pros to me, the biggest one I think is the mounting mechanism. Even though the Pure Rock Slim's mounting mechanism does function, it isn't very elegant looking and it is unpredictably janky. That's for a word that I really couldn't find uh, anything else to swap with it in the video. Uh, it doesn't have that security. One of the push pins for me wasn't very uh, successful when I was mounting it when I did the video, so I really couldn't say that that is a better cooler for £5 more. For £20, this is fantastic. You get the looks, you get some great performance, and is there anything else you really want from a cooler? So, as long as it's compatible with your motherboard, check that, it's, well, you see the compatibility list further on, I'll put it here again, then go for it. £20, an absolute bargain. So, thank you very much for checking out the video. If you like the video, please give it a like. If you'd like to support the channel any further, consider subscribing to check out more videos just like this one. And if you want to go that one step further beyond the Call of Duty, you can always subscribe to the Patreon page, which will be somewhere here, uh, and I'll be extremely grateful. Obviously, if you check this video out, e and especially if you subscribe to the Patreon or even just subscribe, let me know in the comments below, say hello, and I'll say hello back. If you have any questions, please ask them in the comments, and I'll do my best to get around to anybody who asks a question, or even comments uh, with just their thoughts. So thanks for checking the video out, and if you have any suggestions for future videos, let me know, uh, and I'll see if I can get around to covering that as well. Thanks for checking this one out, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.